Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I want to do a quick demonstration showing how we can use an ordinary USB joystick to provide inputs to your Simulink model. So the first step is to obviously get your hands on a USB joystick. This one here happens to be an older Microsoft Sidewinder, but I've successfully tested this using things like the Force Feedback 2, the Logitech 3D Pro joystick, and the Thrustmaster. So I'm pretty confident that this approach is actually gonna work with almost any USB joystick. Once you've got your USB joystick of choice, just go ahead and simply plug it into the computer. And once Windows installs the necessary drivers and tells you that it's ready, we can basically jump over to Simulink and start interfacing with this joystick. All right, so now that we've got the joystick plugged in, let's go ahead and fire up Simulink and start ourselves a brand new blank model. And what we can now do is let's open up our Simulink library browser and we are actually going to be leveraging uh, the aerospace block set. So I'm going to assume that you've got this installed. If so, we can go ahead and drop this down and look here in the animation subcategory. And actually we'll open this up one more time and we're looking for the animation support utilities. And in here you'll notice there are actually two blocks which are used to interface with the joysticks. Uh, so let me use this one. We're going to use the pilot joystick all and drag and drop that into our model. Uh, let's go ahead and save our model, I guess, while we're at it. I guess we can call this thing uh, Joystick Demo. Okay, save. And uh, let's go ahead and actually start hooking this thing up. So this block is actually going to already interface with our joystick. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves a scope and maybe start thinking about hooking up some of these signals to things like scopes and displays and other fun things just so we can see the behavior okay now now that we've got this hooked up we might be helpful actually to also take a look at uh the block parameter so let's double click on the joystick block and you know, i'll let you read this documentation on your own but basically this is going to allow you to interface with the joystick and there are uh, a selection for joystick id so we're going to start with joystick one if this doesn't work we might have to flip this to joystick number two uh again you can also mess with uh, some of these outputs we're going to leave this as default now the sample time uh let's go ahead and again change that to just some simulation variable we'll call that dt for now and since we've gone ahead and defined that variable, we probably need a script to initialize that variable. So I actually already have this script uh, ready to go. And you can see it is actually very simple. Let's just go ahead and uh, sample at 50 hertz. And we'll, we'll run this simulation for 15 seconds. So if I run this, we'll go ahead and get our DT value uh, initialized. So now coming back to the joystick... What we can now do is, uh, if you notice, uh, we can also, let's turn on signal dimensions just so we can understand what's coming out of this block. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say uh, display, signal and port, signal dimensions. There we go. So if you look, this, this first signal, which is called analog, this is a six element vector. So this is actually, your joystick might have up to six axes. My joystick that I'm using for this demo only has three. So unfortunately, we won't be able to see uh, action in all six axes, but at least we should see three of them. So tell you what, you know what we should maybe do, since I know now that this is a six element vector, let's go ahead and demux this. And we'll say that there are, whoops, excuse me, I want six outputs. Great, we can go ahead and hook this up. And now let's also change our scope. So in our scope, what we can do is let's give this thing also six input ports. And let's change the layout of this to maybe like a six by one. Something like that. There we go. So now we can hopefully, when we hook this up, we'll see all six of those axes together. Okay? Uh, all right. I think we're almost ready to run. Oh, let's, instead of um, 10 seconds, I think we want to use this T final variable. Whoops. So let's go ahead and set that up like such. Okay, and now if we go ahead and click, uh, double click on the scope and take a look, why don't we go ahead and hit play and we'll see what's going to happen. So now we can run the model, and if you notice, unfortunately, this thing ran way too quickly. I, I didn't even have enough time to hit play and then try to move the joystick, so I can't really run the model right now because it's running way too fast. It's, Simulink is basically solving this thing as fast as it can. We want to basically force Simulink to execute in real time. So what's 
interesting is, again, if you come here to this library browser, it, right next to the pilot joystick all block, there's this simulation pace block. So, again, this is part of the aerospace block set. So I'm going to grab, drag, and drop this into my model. And let's rearrange this a little bit just to get a little bit more real estate. And if we look at the simulation pace block, this is basically going to force Simulink to run at here, right here, 1.0. So one second in real time should be one second in simulation time. The only other thing we probably need to do is switch this sample time. Um, I think our variable was DT because instead of 30 hertz, we're doing it at 50 hertz. So, okay, I'll hit OK, hit save. And now if I run this, you can see that watch the progression this is about in real time so now I've got a chance if I come over here to the uh, scope and if I move the joystick we actually get a whole bunch of nothing unfortunately the reason why we're getting no response from the joystick is because it looks like whenever we plugged in this joystick Windows decided to give it joystick ID number two so I need to come in here to my pilot joystick all and come and switch this ID from one to two and now if I do this and again, let's go ahead and run. And now when I move the joystick, look at this. You can see that we get some corresponding action in all of the different axes. Well, I, I take that back. In three of the axes, not all of the axes. And if I push the buttons, you can see that the button value also changes. So tell you what, let me, um, let's see if we can do like a, like a picture in picture so you can see what's happening with the joystick and what's happening with these axes. Okay, and actually, I'll tell you what, let's let's auto zoom this, and maybe I'll scroll this off to the side, so we can see a little bit better of what's going on. Okay. All right, so if we go ahead and press play on the model again, you can see that when I move the joystick in this this axis, that actually changes axis number two. If I move it in this direction, that influences axis number one, and then down here, this little tab does axis number three. And again, what's actually also kind of interesting is if you notice, axis 1 and 2, they vary between a value of negative 1 to positive 1, whereas axis number 3, for this uh, particular case, only went from 0 up to 1. Now, let's do the same thing for maybe the buttons. So let's go ahead and take a look at this button output, and I'll run the model again, and I'll push the buttons on the joystick. So let me turn the joystick a little bit so you can see. And let's push this first button. So this is button, and then look, we get a number 1. This button up here, you get a number two, here's a number three, uh, I guess a number four, and then this is a number eight, and then you push these buttons on the side, 32, 16, 64, and whoops, it ran out of time, let me, let me start it over again, and then find this last button here is 128. So again, um, it might not be a linear mapping, but at least it's deterministic and repeatable, so you can hopefully use this information now and uh, map this to whatever control surfaces you like. Um, maybe the one thing we didn't notice or play around was with was this POV signal, so some joysticks have a point of view little hat that you can use, and I believe if you had a joystick that was equipped with that, you would be able to see see the point of view selection coming off of this signal. So, like I said, uh, the fun thing that we can do with this now is, since we've gone ahead and interfaced with the joystick successfully, we can now use this block and our joystick now to drive other Simulink models, so like for example, uh, an aircraft model. All right, so here we've got a Simulink model of a six degree of freedom nonlinear aircraft model. This in particular is the Research Civil Aircraft Model or the RCAM aircraft for short. Um, if you're interested in more details of this model, please feel free to check out these two videos where we go into the model and its Simulink MATLAB implementation in pretty excruciating detail. But what's interesting and relevant to the discussion today is now instead of having to be limited to just driving this aircraft simulation with boring static inputs, like for example, right? Here you see this is a, uh, a trim value of control surface deflections that are going to put this aircraft in a nice steady state, straight and level cruise flight. But now on top of that, we can start adding the input from the joystick. So we can literally fly this vehicle here in simulation. So you can see right here, if I look under the hood of this block that I've created, I'm just interfacing using our good old friend, the pilot joystick all block that we were just looking at. And what I'm doing now is I'm taking those axes commands, as we saw these range between negative 1 and positive 1 or maybe between 0 and 1 depending on which axis you're looking at and all I'm doing now is I am basically now remapping those to control surface deflections which are relevant for this particular model so now what makes this really exciting is if I look at the inputs oops and let me go ahead and hit run actually I'll hit run 
look at the inputs, maximize this a little bit, and now you can see as we're flying along, I can now deflect the ailerons to the side, I can go ahead and deflect the elevator, I can now mess with the throttle, up and down, and the Simulink uh, model should be responding in kind to that. So for example, let me, uh, let's go ahead and actually I'll stop this, because what would be more interesting, instead of just looking at the inputs, we really care about the outputs in response to these inputs, right? How is the aircraft flying as I deflect these, these control surfaces? So if I look at the output of the system, come here and let's run the model again, we can see that, uh, Things are going along hunky-dory, nice and fine, but if I go ahead and try to deflect the aileron, say left to the right, we should see the, the roll rate of the aircraft increase or decrease. So let me see, if I move this, yep, look at that, the roll rate's going up, I'm gonna try to catch the roll rate, I'm gonna move it to the other side, okay? And similarly for the pitch rate, where is Q? P, uh, here, Q, right here, here's the pitch rate. If I pull on the elevator, look at that, we see a response a dynamic response, right, in a uh, pitch angle. And again, I can also start doing experiments like, what if I crank up the throttle? Look at that, if I crank up the throttle, we see we get a pitch rate and we get an increased speed, right, which makes sense, we're flying faster. So again, this is actually uh, very, very exciting because now I am literally flying the aircraft in real time using this joystick. Now, of course, this is a, a little bit unintuitive and it's a little hard to see what's going on. I, I'm not sure if the aircraft is actually crashing. Is it upside down? Uh, what's going on right now? So looking at these traces, while they are correct and relevant and consistent with the dynamics of the system, it's hard to understand the attitude and what's actually going on with the vehicle by just looking at these traces. So in one of our immediately following videos, I want to talk about how can we now think about tacking on an extra block to this model so not only can we fly the vehicle with the joystick but we can also visualize the attitude and the orientation of the aircraft in real time but again that's another topic for another discussion so um, what we should probably do though is I do have a couple of parting shots I want to talk about uh, related to the joystick interface all right, uh, a couple of the other things I wanted to quickly mention about the joystick interface. Um, in this particular demonstration, we use this Pilot Joystick All Block. Feel free to use the Pilot Joystick as well. It just has a slightly different interface. That being said, these blocks are part of the aerospace block set, so you will need that in order to uh, run this demo. That being said, there are other joystick interface blocks within the Simulink uh, environment. In particular, if you come down and if you happen to have the Simulink 3D animation block set uh, installed on your machine, you come down here and you'll notice there's also a joystick input block here. So you could use this to also interface with the joystick that you've got. Um, if you have the Simulink 3D animation uh, installed on your machine, you can also look at a, cu a couple of interesting demos that might be relevant for the joystick interface. So, for example, if you come in here to the command window, you just type in VR crane underscore joystick and hit enter. This will load up a demo of a crane simulation. Let me see if I can bring this over to the side. Here we are. And what this does, let me see if I can maybe maximize this. I'll put this off to one side, and we'll put that on one side. And now if you run this model, you can see it's also interfacing with the joystick. And if I go ahead and move the joystick around, oh, I guess, oh, sorry. I guess what we need to do is we do probably need to set that joystick ID. So if I come in here, you'll notice this is using the joystick input block from the Simulink 3D animation library. So if I kind of come in here and look at this, I see joystick ID 1. Well, since I didn't get any response let me try joystick ID number two run this again and now if I run this there we go see we get some response I can move the joystick around which yields some kind of motion here and then if I click on trigger number one or button number one we see we get some response from the crane and again I think it's a kind of a cool little demo which illustrates uh, how to interface and how a joystick could be very helpful in your Simulink uh, visualization and uh, interaction process so with that being said I think this is a great spot to leave it I hope you enjoyed the video today and if so I also hope you consider subscribing to the channel if you just go ahead and scroll a little ways down and click on that subscribe button it really does surprisingly help me continue making these videos and I hope to have a couple other videos in the immediate future talking more about how to create visualizations like this crane visualization and use it with the joystick to do cool things like flying our aircraft. So until I see you at a future video, I think I'll sign off for now. Talk to you later. Bye.